Hey everybody, we got a whole bunch of new Game of Thrones to break down, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the legends of Winterfell because there's going to be such an important place in the final battle with the Night King, or at least one of the final battles. There's still lots of theories about where the actual final battle will take place. It's just that we know that there are going to be at least two big battles, one of them taking place at Winterfell, which they're in the process of filming right now, then eventually at King's Landing. So this will mostly cover what's happening way up in the north at Winterfell because you have everybody that's either Team Daenerys or Team Stark massing in the first couple of episodes. Everyone's probably going to roll in like Jaime is headed towards Winterfell, but you have to get through all the really big introductions first like Daenerys and Jon Snow will probably be there in the first episode. So one thing at a time, you don't want to crowd that really big moment of a dragon coming back to Winterfell. And it's not the first time that a dragon has been to Winterfell, which is where we get into some of the secrets and old tales about things that happened at Winterfell involving dragons that might help them out, in addition to the actual keep itself. Like there are many different parts of Winterfell that were built over the ages. Some of them will be more useful in the fight against the Night King's army than others. One of the biggest mythological legends that people talk about when they talk about Winterfell is the idea that there might be a clutch of dragon eggs buried beneath it that's left over from some ancient time in history. Like Winterfell itself is built on hot springs, so it's not too hard to believe that there might be dragon eggs laid somewhere beneath it because dragons used to cover the earth, so it would make sense that at some point a dragon was there. But the really cool thing that's happened in the last couple of years is that we've gotten some extra information that sort of clarifies and places the specific location of where those dragon eggs are supposed to be. So if you haven't read it, World of Ice and Fire is just this sort of history compendium that Martin worked on with Elio and Linda that covers a whole bunch of errata that's not necessarily connected to what's going on in the show right now, but is connected to really big things that they talk about in the history of the books, some of which they can actually pick up on in the prequel series when that starts in a couple years. We talked about how the Dance of the Dragons is one of the leading candidates for the time period that they'll cover during the prequel series. During that period, Jacaris Valerian, who was a prince of the Blacks, like there was the Blacks versus the Greens, two sides of House Targaryen that were warring over the succession, he had a dragon named Vermax. He flew on that to the north to secure the loyalty of the lord in the north at the time named Cregan Stark for the side of the Blacks, like declare for the Blacks, and he granted them a Targaryen princess because he was unwed at the time. While he was there, it was rumored that Vermax laid dragon eggs in the crypts at Winterfell close to the hot springs. So when people talk about dragon eggs being laid beneath Winterfell, they just, in a more recent story, detailed how that might have happened. And while there have been a lot of rumors about what might happen with dragons after a Song of Ice and Fire series, like after they defeat the Night King, will dragons come back? How many more dragons are going to die during the battle? But you still have Drogon and Rhaegal, it's possible that they could lay dragon eggs together. We talked a little bit about the biology of dragons. They have fluid sexuality, they can actually switch sexes. Those two dragons could mate together and create more dragon eggs. But again, dragons used to cover the earth, so there are probably petrified dragon eggs all over the place. Daenerys' dragon eggs during season one, they were petrified before she used blood magic to hatch them, so to speak. So that was a bit of a special situation. Normally dragon eggs are not petrified. But you can kind of see why it's cool that the Dance of the Dragons might be one of the prequel series because it ties to what's going on in present day, the idea that there's this dragon legacy at Winterfell, even though Jon Snow in present day is the dragon legacy, it just takes a different form. Getting into more of the big battle with the Night King and his army of the dead, if you look at the structure of Winterfell here, the best example for the Night King's path of attack is actually when Stannis tried to attack the Boltons who had controlled Winterfell at the end of Season 5. Look at how they're attacking from the wood here. If you're not super familiar with the geography of Winterfell, the north side here that Stannis and his army are looking at is the Hunter's Gate. This is the broken tower over on the right side here, the first keep, the oldest part of Winterfell. This is where Bran was pushed out the window by Jaime. I'm sure there'll be a funny conversation about that when they talk about the defense of Winterfell, like which buildings will be able to hold up better than others. You can see the godswood in the heart tree over on the left side here. So just remember that most of the time when you're seeing Winterfell, you're actually seeing it from the south view. Like when Arya Stark rides up on the hill here, she's looking at the south gate. 
So I would say that the Night King would mostly attack from the north, from Stannis' position here. But you have to imagine that his army is 100,000 plus strong. It'll probably be even stronger by the time he winds his way down to Winterfell. So he'll actually be able to encircle the entire castle. So whereas a normal army would either attack from the south or the north, the Night King could probably do the exact same thing they did during episode 6 when they had the small party stuck in the middle of the lake. Imagine that only Winterfell is now the rock in the middle of the lake and everybody is stuck inside. Although when you think about it, this is a shot from episode 1, they do have a lot of armies that are massing. They have the Unsullied, they have the Dothraki, so they're actually going to be positioned outside the castle. It's not like every single person who's Team Stark or Team Daenerys is going to be inside the walls of Winterfell. But again, that's another big question too, is, is how big are the dragons going to be? Will they actually be able to fit inside the walls at Winterfell, especially when they arrive? You know, forget about preparing for battle. Just arriving and having all those pleasantries where Daenerys has to meet Sansa, the Lords of the North. The Lords of the North are a whole other story too, because they hate anybody with a Targaryen name. The Godswood is full of too many trees, and the South Yard and the North Yard are full of too many people preparing armor, just getting things ready, all the blacksmith, the horses. So it just seems like a, from a practical perspective that Daenerys will have to land outside the castle walls, even though it would be pretty badass to see him perched on one of the walls of Winterfell. As big as they are, he would just bring one of those outer walls crumbling down if he tried to perch on top of it. But the other really cool thing, you may have heard Maisie Williams just did another interview where she pretty much confirmed that we're going to get an April premiere 2019 for season 8, which everybody believed. I did a video sort of explaining the Emmys timeline. There's actually a cutoff date where people have to start posting a certain number of episodes before they're eligible for Emmys that year. And Game of Thrones doesn't want to have to sit out a year for the Emmys for their final season, which basically means that they have to start airing episodes bare minimum by the third week in April, but I don't think that they're going to wait that long. Normally, it used to premiere earlier in April. They'll probably just retake that because, in addition, Maisie Williams also said that they would finish filming in December, which flies in the face of everything else that all the other cast members have said. Principal photography is supposed to wrap at the beginning of the summer, so when Maisie Williams says that they're going to finish filming in December, what she's probably talking about is the pickups. Like, they'll finish principal photography early on, they'll be in post-production for most of the year, and then they'll just, like, find little inserts that they need or takes that they want to do better or things that they want to change. The biggest thing that they could possibly wait to film till the end of the year would be the actual ending. Like, they just want to stave that off as long as possible just to prevent any potential spoilers. Most of that will probably be filmed indoors just because it's easier to control spoilers from getting out than when you're filming in broad daylight. Like they're filming the Battle of Winterfell right now, it's pretty easy to see what's going on. But let me know in the comments, knowing now that there was potentially a clutch of dragon eggs that was laid during the time of the Dance of the Dragons, which wasn't that long ago from present day on the show, don't you actually want to see them do that for the TV show? And I know I haven't talked too much about the actual Dance of the Dragons because it's pretty complicated. There are many, many Targaryens during this period. Martin's really only covered it in a couple different novellas. He might do just a little bit more, but for the most part, it sounds like the leading candidate for the actual prequel series. But we're not going to get too much more information about that until after the final season has aired. But just don't be surprised if they film pilots for a number of different prequel series and then watch those and decide which is the strongest. Like right now it's still in the script phase, like they're reading the scripts for all the different ideas. Then they'll start filming the ones that they think are the strongest. There's a new round of that DVD giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and share the video using those tools on the watch page. Congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last video, Chicane Madison. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. Click here to watch Peter Dinklage and George R. R. Martin talk about the bittersweet ending that they have in mind for Game of Thrones. And click here to learn more about what's going on with the premiere date. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.